to this topic is impetigo, which is a kind of infection on the skin. And it was inspired by a 10-year-old patient that I saw months ago. Impetigo is caused by a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus. Or sometimes it's caused by Streptococcus pyogenes, which is also called group A strept. Now, you remember group A strept is the same bacteria that causes throat infection or strep throat. So the same bacteria that causes strep throat, for some reasons, could also cause infection on the skin called impetigo. Now, this skin infection, which is broadly called a rash, is kind of different from a lot of rashes you see on the skin. This one is very raised and crusty and inflamed around it. Sometimes when kids or people have a rash, it evolves before they are seen by a doctor. So this one, this rash has evolved, but uh, at the time we usually see rashes like this in Patigo, the parents would have uh, treated the child or the youth with some of the home remedies like Vaseline or antiseptic creams or some antibiotic creams. So by the time we see children with rash, such as this, uh, the parents would have already treated them. So this child came in with three days of rash over the back of the wrist. And when I looked at him, I had to only eyeball him once and uh, I made a diagnosis of impetigo. And if you look, up, look closely, this um, rash is crusty, it's crusted, just like the crust of pizza. And it did not start like this. It was kind of thin walled and then it becomes thickened. And sometimes very, very tormenting and very stubborn to go. It doesn't usually go away until adequate treatment is, is rendered. So that is the story of impetigo. It doesn't tend to go away until adequate treatment is rendered. And sometimes it's very contagious. And um, by the time kids come in, they don't know where they got this from. So that is the story of impetigo caused by group A streptococcus. Like I said, the same organism, the same streptococcus that cause throat infection or strep throat in some kids and adults. So for some reasons, the same strep throat, the same organism that causes strep infection of the throat causes skin infection that's called impetigo. The thing with impetigo is some people are susceptible to it. In other words, in a household full of children, one might evade the infection. Every other person might have it but one. So, like I said, the symptoms start very gradually, usually with itching and water containing blisters that uh, combine together and ticking up. Like I said before, it could be very tormenting and stubborn to treat with home remedies, like I said before. It doesn't tend to respond with antibiotic creams and Vaseline or whatever parents put there. And that's what usually brings the parents and the child to the doctor. Like this child I saw, mom was doing everything she could, but the crusty rash was very stubborn and unrelenting. And of course, um, the school nurse, uh, nurses don't want uh, kids to come to school if uh, they have... Uh, this kind of rash, which could be potentially, which is very contagious. Now, when kids have rash like this, it could, it could occur anywhere uh, on the body. Usually, extremities over the stomach area, at the back, you know, lower waist, everywhere it could be, it could be located on any part of the body. Especially around the jaw areas, it could also go around the jaw or chin area. And that's where the students tend to recognize it when it occurs 
on the jaw areas, students tend to recognize it easily. But when it occurs on the dorsum of the hand, like this one over the wrist or abdomen or legs, it tends to throw some students off and they wonder, what is this rash? So uh, it takes a cl experienced clinicians to make the diagnosis, one who has seen the rash before. So for this kid that um, I saw months ago, it took me a couple of seconds to make the diagnosis because I've seen several of these rashes before over my, you know, 25 years of practice. So all you have to do is to see one and recognize the rash when you see that. And like I said, it's very contagious and tend to spread easily around school, classmates, churches, and uh, people who have in close contact, it tend to spread. And of course, I've seen it um, in uh, kids who wrestle, when they wrestle and have body contact and get some scratches or scraps from the, from the tough or the grass, it could be an entry for this bacteria to begin to attack their skin and multiply and cause impetigo. So the bacteria tend to be opportunistic and take advantage of uh, scraps and scratches on skin surfaces and uh, multiply and begin to form in petigo. The thing is that it might take about 10 days for the symptoms to appear after you've been exposed to somebody with in petigo. Now complications from this disease is very rare. We don't seem to see a lot of co complications, but it could also cause a potential complications it's what we call glomerulonephritis, which is a mouthful, but is just some uh, infections or inflammation of the part of the kidney. But we don't see that very often, but it's always something to really watch about and for parents to know that uh, when their kids have impetigo, there's the possibility they can have consequences or complications that affects the kidney. Now, I've, I've already talked about spread, how they spread from one person to the other in crowded conditions, daycare settings, school settings, wrestling, and so on and so forth. This is one of the diseases or illnesses that an experienced clinician or pediatrician or somebody who have seen this before could make on the spot diagnosis. So no labs is required to make a diagnosis. And when I see a case of impetigo, I usually treat them with oral antibiotics. I don't waste my time prescribing topical antibiotics because from my experience, they don't work with impetigo. I like to use uh, clindamycin by mouth uh, every eight hours for seven days, and that tends to clear that. Within two, three days, the skin will be cleared of impetigo and the kid is um, is ready to go to school because parents always eager to send their kids to school. But of course, this impetigo has to go away. And usually it, takes, it works when the antibiotic works very fast and the kids are able to return to school as quickly as possible. So how do you avoid this? The, to avoid this is to hand hygiene, Washing hands uh, where you go to frequently as, as soon as um, you wash your hands. After recess, kids should wash their hands. Uh, after playing basketball, wrestling, they should wash their hands. And of course, taking a um, daily bath and shower is very important to wash off all the contacts, dirt that is on the skin when the kids are playing. So that could help with prevention. But the most important thing is to recognize that when you have a rash, a skin rash that looks like this, this uh, crusty honeycomb, re relentless, stubborn uh, rash, it could be impetigo, and it would not go away until it's treated very adequately. The earlier you treat it and address it, the better. So now you know about impetigo and how to suspect it and how to make sure your child or your youth sees a clinician who knows about impetigo. 
Thank you so much for listening and please share this video with your friends and families. Thank you.